Thank you so much for having me. Um, as was said in my bio, I'm an engineer at LinkedIn. I work on a design systems team. Um, but I would like to think that is the least interesting thing about me, so we're not going to talk about that today. Um, outside of work, I consider myself an artist. Um, I try to make a lot of things, ranging from Twitter bots to satirical web projects. Um, my process looks something like this, uh, which is a lie. Um, if I'm being honest, this is what I would like it to look like. Um, what it actually looks like is something like this, um, with lots of... Um, <laughs> crippling self-doubt and a lot of pivoting in the middle. Um, but something that has been a part of my process for the longest time has been data. Um, since for as long as I remember from my first website that I created, my ideas have always been informed by data. Um, and then also data has always been the idea itself. Um, I think many of you may be familiar with the former ideas being informed by data. Um, in design and development, we use data to back up our ideas. Um, or to go against them. We use it to measure the impact of a decision. Um, but in those cases, the data is still secondary. Um, for me, data has always been the catalyst for the idea, not just a tool to aid it. Um, because there's always a reason for data to be compiled or collected. A data set is inherently an idea, a way of saying there might be something here. Um, so just like big companies collect data about us because they know it tells a story, it might be an incomplete story or a false one, but it's still a story nonetheless, one they can sell to advertisers. The same way they do that, we can also collect data about ourselves and the world we live in to answer our own questions. Um, so one of my favorite examples of, of this is Call Me Adele by an artist and a programmer. Her name is Wipawe. Um, so she gathered the chat history of the first four months of a long-distance relationship she was in for four years, um, she gathered the first four months and then the last four months. And after using text analysis on the data, she was able to discover certain things about herself, like how towards the last months of the relationship, she became more dependent. I was the one sending the initial text message um, instead of him or her partner being the one reaching out. Um, another project I really like is everything I've, I've Everything I've Ever Wanted to Know by Martin Sims. So it's just a drop down list of everything she's ever Googled. from 2004 to 2007. Um, but lastly, I think there's nothing that encapsulates the idea of data as an idea than um, the work of Julia Penelope. She's a linguist. Um, she scoured the Oxford English Dictionary one by one, going line by line through every word in 1977 to make her own data set. Um, and keep in mind, in 1977, the Oxford English Dictionary was about 300,000 words. Um, so she was doing research into sexism and language. Um, specifically, she was trying to find out how many words there were in the English dictionary that referred to a woman as a prostitute. Um, so she found 220. Um, and for men, she found 22. Um, so just by taking words that fit a certain criteria out of the dictionary, she was able to find a pattern and tell a story of what the English language had to say about men and women. Um, so it was a story I, I wanted to keep telling. I wanted to be able to explore beyond names for um, a prostitute and look at the words that, that there were in the English dictionary that were gendered, so either described a man or a woman. And this is like the binary definition of gender. I'm not going to go into how there's more. Um, but I wanted to build a gender dictionary, basically. Um, and that's what this talk is about, not about data-driven design, um, but it's about using code to create your own data set. Uh, so the first question to ask. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna take off my earrings. Yeah, this, is not this is what I get for trying to look stylish. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the. So the first question to ask is where and how can I get this data? Um, and it's usually one of these three ways, API, static data, web scraping. Um, so before I started the process of gathering data, I had to know what my criteria was. So what was a gendered word? Um, for example, this would be a gendered word because it has man in the definition. This would be a gendered word because it has female in the definition. So for me, um, a gendered word was a word that had man, woman, female, male in their definition. Um, so next step, I started looking for some APIs. 
Um, and the first thing I, went, I did was go to programmableweb.com, which is API heaven. Um, there are APIs for all sorts of things. And if you're not familiar with what an API is, um, it's an interface through service. Like you have a wall socket, that's an interface to get electricity, and API is an interface to get all sorts of things. Um, like this is a Google, this is a search for food APIs, which has a bunch of stuff, um, like recipes. Um, so also like social media sites create APIs so we can interact with their data. Um, for example, I made this website that uses the Twitter API to tell you whether you're a tweeter or a retweeter, um, because I wanted to convince my friend that I was like original. Um, <laughs> Um, wait, but I think I'm actually a retweeter in that. Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> anyway, when I searched for dictionary APIs, I found one called Wernick. So they have a reverse dictionary, which means find all the words that have this word in its definition. So for my use case, an example of a gendered word is one that has male, female, woman, man. So this is the reverse dictionary for woman. So all of these words have woman in their definition. So I made a request to the API for the reverse dictionary of women and all the other terms. Um, and I got back, for each request, I got back a response that looked like this. So this is JSON format, and that means um, it's a sequence of data in key and value. So you can see highlighted key would be the word, and then value would be the matron, and then everything else is still in that same format. So unfortunately, I found out this happens a lot with APIs because they want you to pay money. Um, so it wasn't giving me everything. It says they have about 3,000 words in the API, but they only gave me back like 400. So I had to find another way to get the data. Um, and the second way is static data sets. For the context of this talk, a static data set is data that's in a file, like CSV, JSON, TXT. Um, for example, this project called Wi-Fi, um, I was home in Nigeria, and I was thinking of how slow the internet was. Um, so I got a static data set of Wi-Fi speeds online, which was in CSV format. It's on the top right, um, which is basically a spreadsheet. Um, and then I used it to create a site that allows you to experience different Wi-Fi wi speeds as loading screens at popular website. So this is how long it would take you to load Netflix in Egypt. I don't know if I, OK, cool. Um, so I looked on GitHub, and I found a dictionary in JSON format which looked like this, so I needed to find all the gendered words in here, um, words like these. So if we go back to our definition of gendered words, remember a gendered word is one with one of these terms in its definition. Um, and we can grab all those words using something called regular expression. So regular expression is, se is a sequence of characters that defines a search pattern. Um, if we go back to the Call Me Adele project, one of the things she tries to measure is how many times um, her partner would say her name or a nickname for her during the first four months and during the last four months. Um, so instead of like, looking for each instance of her name, she could just create one regular expression that covered all of the nicknames, so boothing, bay, babe, baby. Um, so in this case, all of the words at the bottom are matches for that singular string at the top. Um, so you can do the same thing for these words. Um, for a brief explanation, the question mark means everything before me is optional. The group is just for grouping. Um, and then the bar in the middle is saying match either thing on either side. So it will match these or match these. So you can see all the words on the bottom are matches for that singular expression. Um, and so when I used this to filter the data set, it came out to be 8,000 words. Um, but when I went through the list, there were some words that weren't actually gendered, so I had to find a way to get rid of them, words like rabbit test. Um, <laughs> so I decided I would look for patterns in the incorrect words, the words that weren't actually gendered, um, so I could find a way to remove them. Um, and one of the patterns I found was very specific. It's words that were basically um, for, for people and not used to describe people. For example, like there's Peter and there's mantlet. Like mantlet is a cape worn by woman. It's not a word that describes women. Um, and then Peter is a name for a man, not a gendered word. Um, so luckily for me, there are libraries like NLTK, which stands for Natural Language Processing Toolkit, um, that allows you to process the English language. And that what that means is if you give it a sentence, it can tell you, for example, how many nouns are in the sentence, how many verbs, whether the sentence is positive or negative. Um, so the first thing you do before you process a sentence is you break it up into pieces, you just like chop it apart, um, which is what's happening on the right. And then after we tokenize it, which means chop it apart, 
we can use the NLTK part of speech tagger, which will tell you for each word in the sentence um, what part of speech it is. So we can see an, um, man is NN, and NN is a noun, baptismal, and common, or JJ, which means they're adjectives. Um, and I know that because I looked it up. Um, so I can check what the word was before the gender term. So I can see that for comes before a man, so I can just remove Peter from the dictionary and say, oh, it's not a gendered word. Um, the other pattern was closing items, um, like words like skivvies, which I thought was the name of a disease, but is actually men's underwear. <laughs> um, and then pajama and hobble skirt. Um, so I found a list of closing items, so I can move all the words that are secretly closing items and pretending to be gendered words. Um, unfortunately, the website where I found the list, um, you have to pay to make API calls, and I didn't want to do that. Um, <laughs> so I decided I would scrape their website instead to get the information that I wanted. Um, and web scraping is the third tool for getting information that you probably shouldn't be getting. Um, <laughs> And it's basically, you grab, it's, it consists of grabbing the HTML that makes up the website, and then you can look through it and find what you want. Um, so the steps are opening the URL, getting the HTML, and then finding what you want in the HTML. Um, so for the last step, to find what you want in the HTML, you can look in your browser's inspector, which is just a right click, and then inspect. Um, so I see the data that I want is in a link that's the child of a span with the class TD. And so with that information, I'm able to get all the websites that they did not want me to get without paying. Um, and then I use this to filter the word list again, and then I, it comes down to 4,000 words. Um, so the last thing I wanted to do is find gender opposites. So I wanted to match words to the opposite, lady, gentleman, wife, husband. Um, and I can do that using something called words of ec. Why is this happening? Just. Words of ec is an algorithm that transforms words into vectors. We'll do this together. You feed the algorithm a ton of text, and then it groups words together based on um, how they appear. Um, sorry. It groups words together to the, together if they appear in the same context. Um, so you can see kitchen is next to, that's actually wrong. Um, bathtub is next to faucet. Well, it's not perfect because it's code. Um, so garden is close to hose, and then um, tool is close to drill, color is close to paint. Um, it's based on the idea that a word is characterized by the company it keeps. So if you look at this conference and you like, you can assume, I mean, you probably shouldn't, but you can assume that somebody is either a designer or a developer because awards conference is for designers and developers. The same way, by the context the word is being used in a sentence, you can assume whether it's like another word. So in this case, since salt and seasoning appear in the same context, you can assume that they're, like salt is closer to seasoning than it is to like chair. Um, and with that model, we can do stuff like getting the similarity of words. And this is like just an online demo of it. Um, I kind of understand on a basic level how this works. And that's kind of all you need to understand. I don't really know about like all that really like hard algorithmic stuff. But you don't need to know that to, to actually use it. So you can see like the similarity between woman and wife is closer than the similarity between women and rectangle. Um, and then you can also get word analogies. So you can do woman is to queen as man is to king. Um, and that's it. So I got the initial word set using APIs and by finding static data sets. And then I cleaned and filtered the data set with reject, regex, web scraping, and NLTK. And then I used word to vec to find the word opposites and their equivalents. And I gathered all the data. And I was able to create the interface with a friend of mine. Um, so included words and their gender opposites. Um, and I really like that you're able to see and explore bias in language, um, including what words have undergo undergone semantic derogation, which is the process that words take on more negative connotations than they originally um, were defined as. So you can see like master and mistress are like kind of very different words now. Um, mistress has taken on a more negative connotation over the years. Um, and also, which words or named phenomena are specific to a gender, like there is no female equivalent for sissy. Um, so creating this data set allowed me to have something to point to when I wanted to claim that language can be sexist. Um, it also allowed me to tell a story and create discussion about something that I believed. Um, and then lastly, I think make, what data making can do for you is it can help you answer questions about yourself and also about the world we live in. Thank you.